<laughs> well, this is a um, true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine. His name was Bud, and he was one of those big game hunters, you know? Some people think that sort of thing's cool, but I tell you, Bud had stared the biggest polar bear down, face to face. He'd wrestle alligators just for fun. Why, he'd wander into a den of lions and not even flinch. But when it came to the smallest little spider, he'd turn into a quivering mold of jello. Now, Bud was on safari in Africa, in the thickest jungle. He'd been trailing a tiger all day with nothing but a bowie knife when he set up camp for the night. He was just drifting off, lying right on the African dirt, when the ugliest, hairiest little beetle kind of bug crawled right up the side of his head and gnawed its way into his left ear. Bud went balmy. He was running all over the camp, jamming his finger into his ear, trying to get the bug out. Bud could feel the earwig pincing away at his eardrum. By the time they got him to the clinic in the nearby village, Bud's eyes were spinning around in his head. The doctor took one look in his ear and shook his head. There was nothing he could do. The bug had got in too far. Any attempt to extract it could lead to permanent brain damage. Bud might just have to live with it scurrying around in there for the rest of his life, unless there was this old witch doctor at the edge of the jungle. <laughs> Bud's hunter friends dragged him to a little hut down the end of a dark dirt road. The witch doctor was standing in the door of his weird old shack. He was ready to go to work, and he looked like he was going to enjoy it. He started by getting Bud's buddies to tie him down on this bamboo bed. They bound his arms and legs and strapped his head still, one ear facing up, while the witch doctor mashed up a bunch of bug lava he'd poured out of a rusty old tin can. Bud cringed as the witch doctor added little bits of dead moth wings and ground caterpillars. The old man started spooning the stuff right into his ear. Bud could feel the mash stuff oozing down in there, all cold and slimy, filling every nook and cranny right up to his brain. The witch doctor said the smell of the dead insects would flush the earwig out of there, but it didn't work. The witch doctor was about ready to give up. Maybe the bug ought to just stay inside, but Bud wouldn't hear of it. He didn't care what the old man had to try next. He'd go with it. So the witch doctor started searching around the dirt floor of his hut until he found what he was looking for. The biggest, meanest male African earwig anyone had ever seen. The witch doctor tied this long piece of hair around the earwig's head and then carried him to Bud's ear. Bud yelled and squirmed around. The witch doctor held on to the little thread till he felt the male earwig stop. Waited till he found his mate, then pulled the thread out of there with all of his might. Bud shrieked in agony as the male earwig came catapulting out of his ear, holding the female earwig in his long, creepy legs. Bud was relieved, ready to go, ready to forget about the bugs and get on with his hunting, when suddenly, he remembered, the earwig had crawled into his left ear and was yanked out of his right. The witch doctor shrugged with a smile. That always happened with the females. They like to burrow right deep inside the head to lay their eggs in the brain. Oh, this is a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine. Oh, Bud survived, his hearing improved, and yes, if he stands sideways, you can see right through his head. <laughs>